guys, this is James with Rogue Duelist Trade, and on this channel, we talk about current and upcoming Yu-Gi-Oh! product, and whether or not you should invest your money in order to profit. I recently did an updated risk analysis on Genesis Impact. If you guys would like to see that video, you can find it in the link that is popping above my head right now. But I discussed the high risk that this product has in terms of demand for cards that are going to be coming within Genesis Impact. But there are some recent things that have happened within the TCG community that I believe may actually save this product if you are a vendor hoping to be able to make a return. Because we've all recently seen and have watched Phantom Rage crash and fall as it came out into the TCG. And I think many people are worried about whether or not we're gonna be seeing other products that are going to fail very similar to Phantom Rage. I'm hoping that this video will provide you guys a gleam of hope. And obviously we have to wait and actually see what happens in terms of this product's performance once we hit the official market launch. But from what I've seen, I feel that there is a ton of meta potential within this product, primarily because of one of the three archetypes that we are going to be getting. Also, if you guys have been following this channel for a while, we have just hit over 5,000 subscribers. Now guys, I want you to go down in the description below and follow me on Twitter. And I want you to respond to the tweet that's popping up on the screen and provide any questions that you guys might have for me. I'd like to do a 5,000 sub special and do a Q and A with you guys by answering any questions that you might have for me, whether it's Yu-Gi-Oh related, vending related, or any types of personal questions that I feel comfortable sharing. I'd absolutely love to do that with you guys and also do a giveaway on that 5,000 subscriber Q&A video. Go into my Twitter, comment on my tweet, and let me know any questions that you might have for me. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into this video. And I want to keep this more as a short and simple discussion. So if you guys haven't guessed it already, the archetype I was alluding to is Drytrons. The Drytrons is a new ritual strategy that really is splashable within multiple different ritual strategies. Because in my opinion, it makes rituals far more playable. But even beyond that is that Drytrons brings an amazing combo facilitation, creating another combo deck that is likely going to be hitting our meta. Now, there has been a lot of different deck profiles coming out within Drytrons, and I'm going to have links down in the description below. Some of the notable ones are Pak, which is P-A-K, another Yugi tuber who has created a very thorough deck profile and combo video for Drytrons. You guys should definitely check that out. In addition to that, another content creator, which created a very similar deck profile, which is a little bit different, is Yasin656. To take it a step further in terms of influence or hype, we even had Team Samurai do a combo video showing how powerful Drytrons can be. Whether you hate or love Team Samurai, he is one of the biggest influencers within the Yugi tubing community. That's going to create a lot more hype around this archetype, additionally, because it's actually very good. So I'm going to give you guys some quick overviews as to why, and I highly recommend you guys go check out some of these deck profile and combo videos to see for yourself, but Drytron combo is extremely consistent. There are so many cards that help you dig into your deck to get you into your combo facilitators. You have preparation of rights and pre-preparations of right, which is basically a plus two and also gets you into some of your main combo cards within Drytrons. You also have Cyber Emergency, which can search light machine monsters, which is Drytron. You have Drytron Nova. Nova can basically e-teleport any of your Drytron monsters from your deck to the field. You also have the field spell within Drytrons, which is Fafner, which can search any of your Drytron Speller traps from your deck to your hand, thus being able to search your Nova. And you also have cards like Cyber Angel Benten, which is extremely accessible and very easy to use within this deck. And I probably missed some cards, but all of these cards are able to dig and search within your deck and help you get into your combos. And you play most of those cards as three ofs. I believe Pock said in his video, giving you like 17 ways to get into each of your Drytron monsters, which is absolutely nuts. And in addition to that, if you watch some of these combo videos, as they explain the concept of their deck build, this deck can not only bring up negates, but can also play through a variety of hand traps. Now that we have an archetype that can potentially carry Genesis impact with value primarily going to some of the higher rarity cards such as Nova, but also giving decent value even to the lower rarity cards because there are a lot of rares and super rares coming within Drytrons. And even though they won't have a lot of value, they'll likely have more value considering a lot of 
the other cards coming in the set. But that also means that collector rares will just be added value on top of the value that we get from Drytrons, even though it will be a subset of cards. There are some decent collector rares like the Nightmare cards that are coming as collector rares in this product. And we're also going to be getting collector rares of a lot of the Drytron cards, primarily the Ritual Spell and two of the Ritual Monsters. And there is going to also be a level of demand for the Magistus and Evil Twin archetypes, even though they won't be as high as demand as I would anticipate for Drytrons because Drytrons immediately has meta relevance. And from a vendor perspective, if you guys invested in this product, especially at the case level, that only helps make up your margins and stay positive in your investment. Now, obviously, if we did not have Drytron as a potential archetype to help carry this set, then it would be very difficult from what I could tell to see if you could really make money from Genesis Impact. But now that we have an archetype that can help carry and we have other added values, such as the collector rares, such as a level of demand within Magistus and Evil Twins, it does provide a lot more promise for Genesis Impact. Now, I would say that there is a large level of risk because initially I thought the ban list can only help Genesis Impact perform, but now looking at it, the ban list could actually hurt Genesis Impact depending on what gets banned. And the reason why the core of Drytron builds that I've seen that are extremely competitive carry very similar combos to what's currently in our meta. And within those combos, that includes certain cards like Halki Fibrax, Link Ross, Aurora Dawn, Metal Marcher, True King of All Calamities, amongst other prime candidates that could potentially be banned because of how rampant they are in today's meta. But honestly, even if some of those cards get hit, it's going to hurt the entire meta, not just Drytrons. And from what I can see, Drytrons provide such a consistent strategy because of all of the cards that can help dig into the deck and get you into your combos. I really don't think that a lot of these cards that are rampant in the meta, if they get banned, if they really can hurt Drytron all that bad, because people are just going to adapt and find other end boards and combos to go into, thus Drytron being a prime candidate to help facilitate a lot of future combos within the meta. Now guys, that's gonna wrap up the video. Like I said, I wanted to keep it short and sweet, but I wanted to just give you guys a ray of hope. I think you guys need to look into Drytrons. And if you see cards like Drytron Nova as Genesis Impact comes out, that is definitely a card I'd consider investing in if the value is low on market launch. Again, I feel like that is a card like a Researcher or a Golden Lord that is going to help carry this deck building set similar to Secret Slayers. And I am very happy to see that there is hope for Genesis Impact and that there is a lesser likelihood of it to flop. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you guys agree, disagree? Do you think there's a chance? Do you think there's not a chance? Are there things that I'm not considering? I'd love to get your thoughts. Now guys, if you enjoy content on whether or not to invest in modern Yu-Gi-Oh products, stop right now and subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you guys don't miss a video from me. Also, if you guys would like to help support the growth of this channel to help the YouTube algorithm, stop and like this video. That'll help people discover this channel and we can help grow this channel together. But guys, I appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you on the next video on Rogue Duelist Trade.